In this session, particularly, we are going to have uh, three speakers, um, and uh, the panel discussion is about uh, collaboration I and mean, how to leverage technology uh, in collaboration. I say basically, healthcare cannot uh, function as a silo. We have found that. Uh, say multiple agencies, let us government or uh, private or whether it is healthcare provider, health service provider, tech provider, so many people work together. And uh, unless uh, there is a collaborative effort, we have found that uh, during COVID, a collaborative approach helped in reaching out to multiple patients in the crisis. So the all these speakers will be speaking about uh, how collaboration can be um, made effective leveraging uh, technology. Next uh, uh, speaker uh, will be Dr. Uh, Santosh Matthew. He is the uh, currently serves as the country lead for social and public finance policy at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in India. Uh, earlier to this, he had a distinguished career as a senior civil servant in India Administrative Service, in which he served as additional chief secretary for government of Bihar and as a chair of National Council for Teacher Education, and also served as joint secretary for Ministry of Rural Development. So. He has uh, got an MA in economics from Delhi School of Economics, and he holds PhD in development studies from IDS Sussex and an MSc in social research methods from University of Sussex. Over to you, Dr. Santosh Mahal. Thank you very much. Most of us were born in a hospital, and so was I. But I had the good fortune of growing up inside one. And the reason why this was possible was because from 1957 to 1974, my mother was the founding head of the Department of Pediatrics in Trivandrum Medical College. So as a child, I saw how she was helping people navigate the labyrinth of the health system, friends, relatives, and she was a very strict practitioner in the sense that she never would meet patients at home and no private practice and therefore, as you can imagine, was a very tough woman. In 1986, I went to Bihar. I was allocated the Bihar cadre. I served there till I took voluntary retirement in 19, uh, 2017. And I had the good fortune of running the health system for a short while in the, in the state of Bihar as well. One thing that struck me is the agony that people have to experience while they try to navigate the health system. I may have been the health secretary of Bihar. I still needed to speak to somebody to help me navigate that system. I was better than one for two months because I had a back problem. And it was my officers who actually navigated the system for me. So we are, we are talking about collaboration. So we, the director of the National Cancer Grid gave us a fantastic example how collective effort and championing produced a system of collaboration, reducing cost, increasing efficiency. But how do we systematically trigger collaboration is the question that I would like to address myself too in the few minutes that I have. <clears throat> Collaboration, if it has to work, has to be at many levels. And for me, that collaboration has principally two elements. One is the demand side and the other is the supply side. Now, demand side collaboration, the gentleman from Ernest & Young, uh, when he was giving this rather fantastic presentation, and I'm delighted, I don't know how many of you know that uh, the Chief Minister of Bihar has just recently allocated 300 crores to actually establish a digital command and control center plus digitization of all the health facilities so that the demand side and supply side collaboration actually is possible, but it's within the government system. What is the idea? You have a problem, there is a toll-free number. A woman who is 70 years old, does not own a mobile phone, is illiterate and is poor, makes a call and says, Beta, sir, there's a bhavutura. Having a lot of headaches. So the person has a triaging system into which 
you have the equivalent of a high quality symptom checker. So it's not a person with not a trained nurse, not a, you know, a, a high quality doctor, but a person interacting with a symptom checker, <clears throat> which then goes through an adaptive question engine. But what is important is that engine is actually creating the electronic medical record of that patient by asking these questions. And which basically means when the doctor and patient meets, there is no uh, uh, medical transcription. There is no voice to text. The almost 99% of the case record for the day has actually been captured. Teleconsult, we all know how teleconsult became so important in our fight against COVID and we had so many examples of that. But the integration of that system so that actually, if you need medevac, you need an, you know, you need an ambulance to be rushed, that same triaging station, the toll-free place is able to coordinate. The point I'm making is, if you really want collaboration that is institutionalized, then you need an integration, you need an integrating system, something that my mother, I saw working as a child, and something my officers in Bihar made possible for me when I was ill. We all have our social networks and therefore we do not really realize the extent to which we depend on our networks to actually get us good care. The second part of this collaboration really is when people who are seeking care or people who are acting on behalf of people who are seeking care can actually make informed choices. And what do I mean by informed choices? There are, if, if you ask me, there are seven data points that are required before, before informed choice can really happen. One is the accuracy with which a particular team in a particular facility is able to capture, case sheet capture. Second is the treatment success rate. Third is accuracy of diagnosis. Fourth is adherence to treatment protocols. Fifth is parsimony and appropriateness in diagnostic tests that are prescribed. And sixth and seventh, patient satisfaction, price, price. And I would add an eighth, which is your eligibility. For the poor people of India, if you actually look at the mandate of BMJY and you look at the mandate of ESIs, and they are, by the way, mutually exclusive, there's a 500 million people who are eligible ultimately to be treated or cared for 5 lakh rupees for a family per year under PMJY. And under ESIS, almost without limit, another 400 million people. So actually, if you add the two, here is a purchaser who has the ability to purchase for 900 million people. And 900 of the bottom half of our population. But if that has to really happen, we have to enable collaboration that is uh, incentive compatible. The problem today is incentive collab uh, compatibility and high quality and no friction doesn't really come together. But for some voluntary efforts that you have seen, supported by government in most cases, but not at the core of what government does. I had the good fortune to go to Kola, 90 minutes away from Bangalore Airport. If, I mean, if you have not gone there, I urge you to go and see. A remarkable piece of work by Tata and working with the state government and district administration. 1.2 million uh, residents of uh, Kola district have access to a toll-free number. But they ensure one thing and they do it very well. And that is, your call will get picked up, you will get triage, you will get a teleconsult, and you will get an appointment with a government doctor in any of the primary, secondary uh, facilities that exist in the, in, in the district. And not only will you get an appointment, they will ensure that there is no denial of that service. You will get that appointment. I won't go into the details. The point I'm making is that Several of the things, in fact, all of the things that we need to come together before sustainable and scalable collaboration is possible has actually been executed in India today. 
if I go to a medical facility, particularly a government one, and I'm prescribed paracetamol, and if that is not available there today, what is its signal? It is actually a failure of logistics, right? I'm a great user of Apollo 24 seven. In one hour, in one hour, the medicine reaches my home. So, or you take Amazon. Globally, they've solved the problem of logistics. Ambulance, EMRC, Hyderabad, 1990s, right? Or Uber, what are they trying? What are they solving for? So the point is that if you take the combination of the National Cancer Grid, if you take the combination of Polar, if you take the combination of Apollo 24-7. If you take the combination of Karkinos, which is a private sector effort at, you know, sort of replicating what the National Cancer Grid did, if you take all of this together and integrate it, then true scalable collaboration is possible, which is actually incentive compatible. But for this to happen, you'll have to flip something. And what is that flipping? Is that you have to make it possible. You will have to make those data points available. That will ensure that groups, teams, providers who are providing the highest quality of care and those seven to eight data points that I mentioned are able to make informed choices and that informed choice is actually driving footfall is driving revenues and profits if you're in the private sector and is driving customers if you are a private sector but funded by the 900 million ESIS slash um, um, uh, PMJY and driving people to those government uh, providers so that the politicians, the finance departments who have to make investment decisions within government itself can have a true test that people are voting with their feet, it's an informed choice, and true quality is actually being delivered. For me, this collaboration will work when we enable our politicians to make the following prompts. And I will close with that. I will get you a doctor consult in 20 minutes. I will get you an ambulance in 40 minutes if after triaging is determined you actually need one. I will ensure that drugs that are prescribed if not provided from the facility will reach your home in 24 to 48 hours. And the appointments without denial of service will be ensured for any diagnostic test that will be prescribed. D-A-D-D, -D, DAD. Doctor, ambulance, drugs, diagnostics. If we can make it possible for our political leadership in states or in the country to make this promise, and if we can demonstrate that in one district, maybe an expansion of Kolar, because Kolar only does doctor consult. Kolar today doesn't do ambulance. Kolar doesn't do drugs. Kolar doesn't do diagnostics. But 20, Apollo 24-7 does that. Carcinos does that. National Cancer Grid does that. I'm not sure if they do appointments. Anyway, the point I'm making is that this is the scale at which we can and we should think. And India is uniquely placed to show the world why this is possible. Why? We have a national ID system that works fabulously. We have a payment system that works with minimal friction. We have a young population. And whether you're rich, poor, illiterate or illiterate, illiterate or illiterate, you are willing to engage with a mobile phone today to jogard your way through your daily existence, right? And we have mobile phone penetration that's 99%, one of the cheapest data plans in the planet. And most important, most importantly, we have ABDM, where the registry is and interoperability is going to become possible. So we have the right mix. We have, thanks to COVID and other interventions, almost everything that has been done, what we need to do is to integrate the public with the private, enable informed choice by care seekers, and the data that is required so that that informed choice can happen, 
and profits volumes can flow on a science-based understanding of quality. And by the way, the worst, I mean, I'm a student of economics and healthcare is a credence group. The user, the patient is very often not the best person to get uh, you know, a reading of quality. The patient feedback is highly suspect. It's about the quality of the cappuccino you get there, the cleanliness of the toilet, and whether it is air conditioned that normally drives uh, patient uh, satisfaction. It has to be intermediated by expert analysis. I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Samsosh. Uh, say it's a really amazing that uh, <clears throat> you've clearly indicated that a collaborative approach is the only way of uh, reaching that DAD, D-A-D-D, for the 900 million population. Anyone who is going to be uh, uh, doing something to reach this DAD to this 900 uh, million population will be called the father of the uh, <laughs> digital health in India. Um, and, uh, I think your vision <clears throat> in Bihar or in Mill Gates, uh, Gates Foundation, definitely all those things can be replicated in other places, like as you said, uh, Cancer Grid Foundation, EMRA, or what happens in Kolar, and uh, these things will help. People have already navigated the difficult health systems. They have found solutions for navigating difficult systems, the financial payment system. I'm sure that uh, in the near uh, future, we'll also be able to provide technology which will help this 900 million to navigate and get the dad in time, actually. Thank you, Dr. Santosh. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Once again, I thank all the speakers uh, for the amazing uh, presentations and sharing their experience in various fields they have been working. As a collaborative approach, all these uh, knowledge can be uh, pooled and democratized and used for uh, uh, ABDM or any future um, uh, programs for the public health. And uh, uh, I thank uh, Kaho and uh, Dr. Vijay Agarwal and Lalu for giving this opportunity. Mm -hmm.